Welcome to Nashville, everyone. Super, super duper excited to be here. We're going to be filming a lot, a lot, a lot of content for you guys to share our experience with you of Nashville, Tennessee. We are staying at the Courtyard by Marriott out at Green Hills. Never been out this way before, so we're going to learn a lot about this area. And this is our room. This is cute. This is very, very important. Okay. If I don't get this in the morning, I'm going to be. Good morning, guys. It's our first full day today in Nashville. We got in at four o'clock yesterday afternoon, so we only had a couple hours of daylight. But today is our first full day. Let's go get ready, and we are going to explore. Whiskey. They have salted caramel moonshine and salted caramel whiskey in here, and they're as good as they sound. Now the retail stores, folks, are right there on your right hand side. They're all on the inside. One of my favorite things to point out, though, right there on your left, is in a little glass building, the green room.
songs, and a Christmas album in the middle of July. Talk to the folks at the Country Music Hall of Fame, and they'll even let you tour that building. And here to our left is RCA Victor Recording Studios, or Studio A. That's still used as a studio to this day, known as the Abbey Road of Nashville, because so many famous faces are recording there, such as Dolly Parton, Roy Acuff, Johnny Cash, and Ben Holmes. And here to our left is Starstruck. Starstruck used to be owned by Reba McIntyre until 2015, when she lost it to her ex-husband in a divorce. It features two state-of-the-art recording studios, as well as a helipad up on the roof. Because when Reba was building Starstruck, she thought she was going to be able to take a helicopter, fly into the city every day, and then land on top of the building. But the city said, absolutely not. No way, Reba. You ain't that fancy. Now, sadly, Music Row has become the 11th most endangered historic site in America. That's because a lot of developers are coming down here wanting to tear down these beautiful homes and turn them into high-rises, office spaces, and condos. When they were first setting up Music Row in the 50s and 60s, this area was nothing more than a regular, everyday neighborhood that had become very popular with the recording studio industry. Once we started being more recognized in the city, they'd buy up these homes and then just turn them into their own recording studios. So the zoning board in Nashville told everybody here that they could alter the inside of their recording studio homes however they wanted to, but not the outside. They did not want to lose any of the historic neighborhood charm. But unfortunately, over the years, the almighty dollar has just slowly won. And here to our left across the street, we've also got Ocean Way Nashville. This was a church up until 1996. Now it's one of the most respected studios here on Music Row. Ocean Way is so highly respected because of the very unique church acoustics on the inside that provide this very rich, unique, and bold sound for the artist recording there. But when you walk through those front doors, you'll find that there's nothing more than an open air church in Nashville.
they've got six buildings here on Music Row. My Kerb also founded Kerb, uh, founded Kerb Motorsports and was Lieutenant Governor of California at one point. And over here to our right is the Quonset Hut. Inside this brick building is a military Quonset Hut that in 1955 brothers Owen and Harold Bradley took out into their backyard of the house that used to be here and turned it into the recording studio that would start all of Music Row where they recorded hit songs like Patsy Cline's Crazy and Bobby Benton's Blue Velvet. She wore blue velvet. Blue velvet. Blue velvet. Blue velvet. Here you are left at the former side of the Spence Manor Hotel where Elvis Presley stayed for three years while recording at RCA Studio B. And over here to my right is my good friend Sean, the nicest, hardest working man in Nashville. You have a great day, Sean. Enjoy the weather. And here to our left is Owen Bradley Park, named after Owen Bradley, one of the brothers who founded the Quonset Hut. Owen Bradley was already a very well-known and beloved producer. Okay guys, that was our first full day in Nashville. We went to Broadway, we did this hop on hop off bus trolley thingy. Mm -hmm. Saw a lot of Nashville in the one day. Um, so yeah, first day was a big success. We are exhausted. I woke up at four o'clock this morning. I'm extremely jet lagged still obviously. But um, yeah, hope you enjoyed today's video and stay tuned for more Nashville content coming up.